Good morning, all of you. My name is Kushbu Gupta. Today, I'm going to present my PPT on respiratory system. For this, we must first know what is respiratory system and what are its functions. The respiratory system consists of nose, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, and lungs. And its primary function of the system is to furnish oxygen for individual tissue cells and to take away the waste products and carbon dioxide produced by those cells. As you can see in the image, it consists of nose, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi and lungs. Now we will come to external and internal respiration process. External respiration is the process of inhaling the oxygen into the lungs and exhaling carbon dioxide. This process includes the ventilation of the lungs and the exchange of air in the lungs and blood within the capillaries of the alveoli of the lungs. Internal respiration, it is the metabolic process by which living cells use blood flowing through the capillaries, absorbing the oxygen they need and releasing the carbon dioxide. So as you can see in the image, in external respiration, we are inhaling the oxygen and in internal respiration, we are exhaling the carbon dioxide and absorbing the oxygen we need. Therefore, accordingly, our lungs contract and expand. During exhalation, they are contracting and during inhalation, they are relaxing. Now, we will come to the nose. It is the external opening of the nose in, in the nostrils or anterior nares and the dividing partition. This dividing partition between the nostrils is the nasal septum which forms two nasal cavities and the, each cavity is divided into three air passages, the superior, middle and the inferior conchoid. They are divided into three parts, as you can see in the image, superior conche, middle conche, and inferior conche. The conche passages lead to the passageway, which is known as pharynx, and the ear is connected to the sinus. The ears through the eustachian tubes, and even the eyes through the nasolacrimal ducts. Now, the palatine bone and the maxilla, the palate bone and this upper zoo bone, they separate the nasal cavities from the mouth cavity. Hairs are present, they are, these are called also cilia, which lines the mucous membrane and about one quarter of mucus is produced daily. Now the nose has five functions. First function is it serves as an air passageway. It warms and moistens the inhaled air. Its cilia and mucous membrane trap dust, pollen, bacteria and foreign matter. It contains olfactory receptors which smell odor. It aids in phonation and the quality of voice are the five functions of nose. Now the pharynx, it is the correct term for the throat. We, uh, to the throat we call, we call pharynx. It is muscular and membranous tube that is about 5 inches long extending downwards from the base of the skull and it eventually becomes a esophagus. Now the nasopharynx, it is behind the nose, oropharynx behind the mouth and laryngopharynx is behind the larynx. As you can see in the image, nasopharynx is behind the nose, oropharynx is behind the mouth and laryngopharynx is behind the larynx which is divided into three parts. Now, there are seven openings of the pharynx. In the nasopharynx, there are two openings from eustachian tube of the ear and two openings from the posterior nares of the nose. In the oropharynx, is one opening from the mouth. Oro, that means mouth. Naso, that means nasal cavity. Now, the pharynx also contain three pairs of tissues that are part of lymphatic system. The pharyngeal tonsils, the palatine tonsils, the lingual tonsils. The pharynx has 
again three functions it serves as a passageway for air it serves as a passageway for food and it helps in phonation by changing its shape now we'll come to another structure that is larynx it is commonly known as voice box it is located at the upper end of the trachea below the root of the tongue and hyoid bone it is lined with mucous membrane it contains vocal cords which produce sound short tense vocal cords produce high notes long relaxed vocal cords produce low notes remember this the it contain vocal cords which produce sound the short vocal cords have high notes and long vocal cords have low notes now we can see several of cartilage structures in the larynx the thyroid cartilage or adam's apple is usually larger in the male allowing longer vocal cords and contributing to a deeper male voice the epiglottis covers the entrance of the larynx while swallowing to avoid choking it is covered with epiglottis so that food does not enter into the larynx now there is another structure the cricoid cartilage which contains the vocal cords now we'll come to the another structure trachea the trachea or windpipe it is a smooth muscular tube that is leading from the larynx to main bronchi these cartilaginous ring why these cartilaginous rings are present in the trachea because these cartilaginous rings prevent crushing of the trachea now we'll come to the another structure bronchi bronchi are the two main branches at the bottom of the trachea they provide passageway for air to the lungs and the trachea divides into the right and left bronchus and then divides further into the bronchial tree as the branches of the bronchial tree get smaller the two primary bronchi become bronchioles and then they become alveolar we'll study them next later on the left bronchi is smaller than the right bronchi it is very important why because room to need it to accommodate the heart if a foreign body is inhaled or aspirated it usually lodges in right larger right bronchi or enters the right lung now we'll come to another important structure of respiratory system that is lungs the lungs are two spongy organs located in the thorax and they consist of elastic tissue which are filled with interlacing network of tubes and sacs that carry air and blood vessels that carry blood now the each lung is divided into two lobes right lung is divided into three lobes as you can see and the left lung is divided into two lobes the left lung has an indentation remember this it has an indentation which is known as cardiac depression or cardiac notch why because the heart is located here that's why left lung is larger than right lung at the end of each bronchi are the alveoli the lungs contain about 300 million alveoli sacs which where the air cells enter and where the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place remember this the alveoli are the very important structure why they are important as they are saying that at the end of each bronchial alveoli are present these and our lungs contain approximately 300 million alveolar sacs here the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place within the capillaries as you can see the deoxygenated blood is coming in and the oxygenated blood is going out okay it is oxygenated here exchange of gases is taking place deoxygenated blood is coming here and oxygenated blood is circulating out now the base of the lungs it rests on the diaphragm a diaphragm plays a very important role it is a muscular wall which is separating the thorax from the abdominal cavity 
and it is involved in respiration, drawing downward in the chest during inhalation and pushing upwards during exhale. As we inhale, our movement is drawn downwards and as we exhale, it is pushing upwards. So, the diaphragm plays a very important role because as you can see, diaphragm is attached to the lungs uh, with the abdominal cavity. So, during respiration, chest is drawn downwards during inhalation and during inhalation, it is pushing upwards. Now, there are some volumes which we must know. First is tidal volume, the tidal volume. It refers to the amount of air that is inhaled or exhaled during normal. As we have discussed earlier that external and internal respiration. The external and internal respiration is the uh, normal breathing or respiration which, is, which involves the amount of air we are inhaling and exhaling during normal breathing. So, during the amount of air which we inhale or exhale, during normal breathing is approximately 500 ml and that is known as tidal volume. And the total lung capacity is 3.6 to 9.4 liters in an average male. Now, when any pathogens, white cells or any immune proteins present during an infection may cause the air sacs to become inflated or filled with fluid, there is characteristic pneumonia. And if both the lungs are involved, it is known as double pneumonia. If both if pathogens enter the lungs, they infect, if there is infection, which is known as pneumonia because there is a lack of breathing. If someone is unconscious, it is possible to aspirate stomach contents into the lungs, causing Aspiration pneumonia may also occur if the patient becomes unconscious and stomach cannot be aspirated into the lungs, air, all the contents are involved due to which aspiration pneumonia occurs. Now, the vital signs or essential elements for determining the state of health include first, the temperature is noted, then pulse then respiration and then blood pressure. A deviation from any of these vital signs indicates a sense of illness and it, is, it involves the diagnosis with physician and to involve the prospects of survival and recovery and treatment. The normal respiration rate for a 5-year-old is 20 to 25 breaths per minute and for a 15 year or older is 15 to 20 breaths once per minute. Remember this, for a 5 year old it is 20 to 25 breaths per minute and for 15 year old it is 15 to 20 breaths per minute. Thank you. If you have any queries, you can ask.